Okay, first let me take a look at uh, uh, the to review. Let's take a look at the order again. So how we are not thinking of this flow as the flow of velocities uh, or velocity field, but rather uh, each of them is a kind of each each of these uh, vectors kind of represents a force. Um, now, force that affects that little uh, ping pong ball uh, that is uh, not floating, but rather uh, situated in the uh, on the pole uh, within within the flow. Okay, so so that that is predictable, and uh, you, the argument that I made is that at the top over there, even though there is no rotation of the flow itself, um, uh, there is a very uh, it's all directed in the same uh, same direction. Uh, it is, however, the um, uh, the difference between the speed of the flow on one side and the other side of the of the of the ball will could also produce the uh, uh, rotation. So so it is obviously the easiest way. Well, I don't have a ball, but you can imagine that this this is, this is the easiest way to rotate, right? So uh, one on one flow goes up, and the other one goes down, and it create creates creates rotation. So. Uh, alternatively, if you were playing any kind of uh, uh, racket uh, uh, game or something else, then you, you don't really need uh, anything on top, you just put it underneath and you create a backspin, on the top you create a topspin, so one or one rotation. And then, and then there is still possibility when uh, 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 on both sides rotation is in the same direction, but the, uh, uh, the differential is what, what makes a difference. Still, will the bigger one will rotate and the other one will be sort of canceled. Okay, so that, that's what uh, the top picture indicates. The, there will be, the, the, the ball on the right will be rotated uh, uh, clockwise. Okay, so, uh, so to make it numerical, let's take another look at the rotation, which is on the right. Um, uh, we, we, we did here in parallel the, rota uh, the rotation and the, the work, and, and then we demonstrated that it's the same thing. Okay, so. Um, uh, okay, so so then uh, the the way to, to look at it is uh, so I have my vector field on the left in those arrows, and then uh, and then what I'm pretty much looking at I'm looking at uh, separately whatever is happening um, uh, vertically and what is happening horizontally. Okay, so and then uh, uh, as if my my ball once again uh, is here uh, like this. And the, uh, the uh, here, and then I'm looking at what's happening in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction. Okay, and I compare how. Well, how do you compare? You subtract. So that's where all these subtraction appear, and then in, in the end, with so many subtractions, you end up with derivatives. And that that's p x. I'm sorry, p y q x is where where they, where they appear. So I'm subtracting, as you can see on uh, on left. I'm looking at p, and I'm looking at the what's happening on the left and the right. Um, both they are uh, are measured in the vertical direction along the x-axis, um, along the y-axis. Okay, so that that's something to to worry about. That's that's the thing. If you go along one full circle, then uh, you will have a, you will vary the uh, the direction of your motion with respect to the axis. So so this right if if we go like this counterclockwise, there will be positive, positive, then negative in the f direction and then down once again negative. So that is subtraction. That's that's what creates all, all the all of these subtractions come from making a full circle, which means that you inevitably will be going back and forth and that, that counts as subtraction. So back to this, so one minus one, one uh, and minus one there uh, we subtract them to know how much rotation is produced by the vertical uh, component of the flow and that uh, uh, it produced uh, it uh, one minus uh, no, it's with respect to y. So this one is about this, this, uh, the, uh, the, the horizontal flow, so it's negative 1 minus 0. Okay, so, uh, and then uh, similarly for q, it is about the, the vertical rotation, so we have 1 minus 0. Okay, so, so you, you can think of, of any other uh, uh, distribution of numbers, uh, I don't know, a, b, uh, c, d, and then uh, and once again, if you, are, you look at uh, in the, in the counterclockwise direction, all of these will appear as a plus b, a plus b minus c minus d. Okay, so that, that's what will, it will produce uh, if you just go clockwise. And that, that creates two subtractions, or well, actually three subtractions. So px, py minus qx. Each p, p is a subtraction, q is a subtraction, and then you subtract them together. Why? Well, because of this little thing. So once again, you go around and you end up with a bunch of subtractions. 
Anyway, and so and that, that's the meaning of the roar. The only thing that happens is uh, later on uh, we are with with calculus that we will uh, worry about is that uh, you take the limit and then um, you end up with uh, nothing but the two uh, partial derivatives of the two components of your vector field. So your vector field is PQ, right? And then and then we differentiate uh, P with respect to IQ with respect to X, and that's that's our rotation. But behind it, uh, behind it still. Uh, this kind of thing, and uh, I hope if we just uh, set these side by side, you see that we're talking about the exact same thing. So the rotation, the rear order on right, and the uh, work on left, it is the exact same thing. Okay, so that's why uh, the, theorem, the theorem works. So we uh, postulated here that they're equal to each other uh, based on our little analysis, little example, and then uh, uh, they were, it worked naturally uh, as, as stated, only on a little, little square. Uh, with no variability of, of, of the vector field along the edges. Uh, uh, and, then, and then we don't really want to go deal with limits just yet. We, we want to, uh, to understand what's going on. We increase the, uh, the region, and we increase the region by adding a uh, square just like this again and again and again uh, until we can build uh, like this. Uh, and then um, uh, the, this part cancels out. Okay, so you have two squares, and then you do, you do this. Okay, well, close to that. Uh, and, and look at it. We have we have a double. We doubled the region, and the uh, the curve is still going around. It, okay. So. Um, okay, and so the uh, the tricky part is is uh, which I did not explain well yesterday. Uh, yesterday is uh, as you can see we we looked at the uh, the positive statement here is uh, is that uh, in the corner green theory. Um, so the uh, on left, I have my uh, work type uh, line integral along a closed curve. It's that circle on left for f is a force uh, vector field. Dp is just stands for that indicates that it's line integral. On the right, we simply have the double integral over that region. See that region over there uh, could be of any shape. So far, I just just indicated that it's made of those little squares. And then uh, uh, and then and what do we integrate rotation? Okay, so. Uh, adding those squares one at a time, what does it amount to? It amounts to uh, to, uh, to integration, okay, over over this two-dimensional region D. Okay, so once again, this is all, all dimension two. Okay, so uh, so just uh, the last remark was was uh, intended to connect this thing to the fundamental theorem of calculus for graduate vector fields. That's one name. And indeed, it works out. If uh, f is the gradient vector field, then the rotor is equal to zero. And uh, according to the gradient uh, uh, test, and then and then we have the theorem we started with. Okay, so so which means that this theorem is more general. It contains the uh, fundamental theorem, uh, which makes it this is the fundamental theorem rather than the one that we started with. Why? Because it's applicable to all all vector fields. So that's all good, and we, that, that is indeed true. Uh, however, the statement is not, not uh, without a problem just yet. And one, one is to discover is this. Um, well, that, that process of, of, uh, that, uh, of adding one square at a time, so this is how one square is added. Well, uh, let me actually do it one more time. So we add in squares. On each square, everything is fine. And as we add it one at a time, the uh, uh, a new new one appears. So should I do it like, like this? Okay, we add one more, and the because of the overlap in the opposite directions, the line integral cancels out like this. Oops. Let me try again. Okay, and we have a bigger region with a bigger curve curve going in the in the uh, counterclockwise direction. Okay, then I add one more. And once again, canceling out, I remove this and I have a bigger region. Uh, imagine that I keep going. Okay, you uh, and one more. Okay, so add, cancel, add, cancel. Then I do one more, add, cancel, add, cancel. You see what I'm, I'm driving at? Add cancel, add cancel. So far, so good. This is my region. This is my curve. 
and see what can happen now, the problem, potential problem with the plan. <clears throat> kind of uh, round back on ourselves. Right, so what if, what if I'm going to add this rectangle, this square? So what's, what's going to happen? Two regions will cancel. Two, two edges, you mean? Mm -hmm. Two, two uh, yeah, the, the, there will be more cancellation because the two, we share two uh, 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 edges here. And here, but then, then what, what, what are we observing here? So oh, what do we have? Two, two close, two paths. We have two paths, and so one path, and the what's the difference between the two paths? One goes clockwise, the other counterclockwise. Look at it. This is actually counterclockwise. Right, so the, the area, we did not change, reoriented any of the edges, but as we added together, the ones on the outside were forming still a, a, clock, a counterclockwise curve, but the, on the inside, they have formed a, a clockwise curve. The region D is still the same, so this is still region D. Okay, so this is my D. So I have been forming uh, that D from these uh, squares, and I have uh, here uh, eight squares, okay, and they, for, they so the middle square is not a part of, the, of D. So it is a, a bridge that has a hole in it, okay? And as you can see, the, uh, the, uh, the formula uh, breaks down in a way. Well, it definitely uh, uh, breaks down because um, even though the part on the right it remains the same, that works out, uh, the integral of, uh, of uh, rotation order of, of F, uh, dA, uh, is that that's still the same. But what, but what is the meaning of the integral on the left is then it's, it's not the same. Uh, because, well, for one, we have two curves. So uh, the lesson is here is that we have to, uh, the, our integral splits into many. Uh, the line integral becomes, as we, there will be many integrals, as many curves we have, and we have to be very careful about which way they go. So, so uh, uh, and you realize that then these will be, it will be, say, a positive value. If this is positive, then this might, might be in the opposite direction, might be, might be negative. So there will, there will be some sub subtraction. Uh, to worry about. So I'm not going to even, even state that theorem, just, just a, a warning. And the, uh, uh, the point of this is to, to consider, consider uh, how, how it actually breaks down in a more specific way. This is just a warning. And then let's see how, how things actually happen uh, uh, for us to worry about. And that is the uh, vector field that we have seen before, the rotation vector field, starting with, say, I call it G uh, negative yx. We've seen this many times. And then we created a new one, which we divided g by by its norm, by its magnitude, s squared. Okay, so in other words, negative y x divided by uh, x squared plus y squared. Okay, so so the direction doesn't matter. So uh, if the original one looks uh, looks like this, uh, this. Okay, so um, what I meant is as it gets longer, that's the, that's f. That's my f. And G will be will be the opposite. It will be long in the middle and short at the uh, at the distance. So uh, how should I do it like this? And then uh, here it actually gets longer, like this. And so in the middle it will be really running really fast. So I don't even want to uh, put it here. Okay. So and this is my no. This is my G and this is my F. Okay, so, so now let's recall what we have learned about it, that both of these, and F specifically, uh, F, uh, G, G fails the uh, gravity test. So its rotor is not zero. However, F passes the gravity test. And we did carry out this computation. Its rotor is equal to zero. Okay, so then if we look at it, then if we look at Green's theorem uh, uh, formula, then uh, once again, let me uh, write the Green's theorem. Unfortunately, I have the same same word letters here, so uh, Green Green's theorem. So let me just write it with words here. Green's theorem. So I have here uh, integral over c. Uh, f d 
dr or ddp equal to double integral over d uh, c bounded by uh, by d bounded by c. Okay, and here I have a order of, of f dA double integral, single integral or uh, double integral. Okay, so the, but the order is equal to zero for this particular uh, 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 vector field. So on the left, on the right, I have zero. Okay, so all right, so it is zero. Then then this integral is zero for every for every c. So in other words, the statement that we make here is for any closed curve. Uh, f, uh, the the um, uh, the line integral is zero. Line integral is zero. You can think of w equal to zero, which is not uh, well. It's simply not true. It's simply not true. It is very easy to demonstrate uh, uh, why this is not true. You just uh, you take that picture on the right and let me draw a, 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 a path like this. I draw a path, uh, so not true. Why? Because I, I can just pick a uh, C as a circle, uh, going say uh, uh, counterclockwise. And the thing about about this, uh, why do I say that uh, in that case W cannot be equal to zero? How do I know? Look at the picture. These are vectors f. In the meantime, the meaning of dp is what's the meaning of dp? P is our uh, perfect curve. It's tangent. So, uh, so p prime. These are p primes. Okay. So I'm multiplying p primes the tangent to our curve. Do, do dot product. That that little dot is the dot product with my vector field, but the vectors, what, what's so special about the tangent vectors, uh, 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 tangent vectors to the circle, uh, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're parallel. So, so uh, dp, uh, pp prime is parallel to, to f. So that's why. Okay, so we go in either, you go this way or that way, it doesn't matter, you either doing positive or negative force, uh, there is no, there is no loss. There is no cancellation either. So it, it's going to be a positive or negative, but it cannot be zero. So as you can see, that that conclusion is incorrect. Then uh, that this part, this one, uh, the uh, the the uh, vector field is uh, is not uh, uh, does not have zero work over any closed curve. Uh, well, as we know, we have one curve for which it is not true. So so why is it why do we we have this. Uh, having this problem because the, uh, the uh, green sphere does not apply, and why it doesn't apply? Why does it apply? It's not. It's not definite, or it's. Um, it's the, well, the domain isn't isn't simply. Different. Well, yeah, yeah, that's right. So as, if you think about it, the right hand side cannot possibly even make any 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 sense. We say that the rotor is equal to zero, but really it is equal to zero only at every point except zero. The function is not even defined there. The, the vector field that is. So the domain. Uh, so that's the warning that the domain is not equal to d. Okay. So you cannot possibly write the uh, uh, Drain theory, unless uh, the function involved in this f of the vector field is defined everywhere that, that you can you can worry about. So the left hand side is fine. All you need to for f to be defined on is that circle. So that on the circle is defined fine. So the left hand side is fine, and uh, it's not equal to zero as we know. Okay, but the right hand side, in order even to write it, 
you have to have your rotor defined throughout the domain, the, the, the circle, the inside of the circle, and it has a hole in it. Okay? So hole. Hole is a problem, uh, and in, in proper uh, language, uh, we, uh, using the proper language, we say that the domain is, uh, is not simply connected. That's one way to put it. Actually, there, there is actually a better way to put it. Uh, this is how the boundary of the domain isn't C. OK, C doesn't doesn't bound the domain of F. Why? Because because this is my circle, and the domain, and the, the, the I, I can certainly think of the domain as this, but that's not true because we have a hole in the middle, and so, uh, and the, uh, the, the end result is how do we uh, fix this, uh, this problem, and the answer we just saw, uh, we look at the, uh, the region. We have to have another circle surrounding the, um, the hole. Okay, so in order to apply Green's theorem to uh, to this uh, particular vector field, we would have to have an extra term for the that f f with a, uh, a circle uh, or a any kind of uh, um, closed curve uh, surrounding the, um, uh, the the origin. So if I have the circle here, the origin will C, then there will be there will be another one going clock uh, going counterclockwise. Now this the original counterclockwise. This goes clockwise. So C. Okay, and then let's say t prime. Okay, so then my region, uh, this then the my uh, uh, my vector field is defined in this rank, and uh, and then uh, what what the, the the proper way to write the uh, Green's theorem it would be the end that uh, the double integral. I'd let me go from right to left. So if I'm doing double integral of of my vector of my row order of uh, of of uh, of f over this region d, this time with a piece cut out, point cut out. Uh, what do I have on the left? Um, on the right, rather, I have I have two integrals. One is uh, along c, as we had, so the same one that is not equal to zero um, of of f d f d p uh, and plus integral c prime uh, f d p. Okay, so and then, then you discover interesting things that because uh, now uh, this is actually zero as we just established it because the order is zero, and then if I reverse the if I reverse my c the direction of c, uh, this is what I have. Uh, the integral of all of c f d p is equal to negative integral negative c prime f d p. This is the picture. C going clockwise, this is negative C prime, also going counterclockwise. And together, it turns out that the, uh, the line needed all along the bigger circle is the same as the one along the smaller circle according, according to, uh, to uh, Green's theorem. Why? The simple reason is there is no rotation. Rotor is zero. There is no rotation. So it doesn't matter which, which, uh, which circle you pick or which, which path you pick, you're going to have uh, you're going to have the, the value of the, of the uh, line integral of the work will be the same. Okay, not the same as to say that it is, uh, uh, remember, path independent, uh, but kind of it is in, in, in a sense, except we, as long as we stay away from, the, uh, from holes in the domain, uh, the, it, will be, it will be path independent. It's kind of a more uh, general way of, of thinking about path independence that, uh, that uh, uh, some paths are identical in that sense and some are not. For example, once again, if I'm looking at the same, uh, at the same, um, uh, suppose this is zero, it is a hole in the domain, and when I'm looking at the same uh, vector field, so I have two paths, and say I have three paths and four. So you see what I'm saying?
So from point A to point B, there are many paths to the way to get it. Uh, the answer depends on the path, but not entirely. These two are equivalent. They will produce the same work. And these two also equivalent. They will produce the same work, but these two will not. Okay, so as you transform your path uh, from left to right, uh, everything is for you. The work does not change unless you have to somehow pass where you cannot uh, pass through the missing missing uh, point, and then something changes. Okay, what changes? Well, once again, remember that ascendance uh, along a uh, uh, staircase that if you are ascending, you are ascending. You cannot just j jump and, and, and uh, end up on, on the same level. Uh, and that is the possibility of uh, like a um, uh, circular staircase is, is uh, ensured by the fact that there is a, there is a hole in the middle. There, that axis uh, of the, or the pole on which the, the staircase is built is what, uh, uh, what, what uh, uh, makes, makes it possible for us to, to ascend and uh, make it impossible for us to uh, ascend and then come back. Well, that's, that's what. Um, anyway, uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's how, how it works. Um, uh, closed curves give you the same uh, path, the same work, um, as long as they stay away from, uh, 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 from the holes in the domain of the, of the function. Okay, so so uh, okay. Let's uh, let's state the theorem with all the warnings and caveats that we have learned, and we are now ready to state the Green's theorem, which will have the exact same formula, obviously. But now we have to be specific, uh, saying what uh, what uh, uh, those restrictions are. I'm stating the uh, the theorem that is still not the most uh, uh, general, but uh, it is good enough. I, I I will stay away from holes. Okay, so uh, uh, Green's theorem. or you can say fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, dimension. Well, fundamental the uh, theorem of calculus for vector fields. That's another way, another way to put it. So I'll, I'll start by stay, stating uh, uh, the theorem, uh, stating the formula. Uh, usually the theorem you state that, uh, well, since we already have discussed the, uh, the restrictions, let's start with them. Okay, so, so number one, we have F. Uh, uh, what is it? It is a uh, 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 differentiable vector field on the, on the plane. So dimension is two. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, well, actually, continuous to continuously differential. I'm sorry. So continuously differential because we're going to we're going to do uh, uh, integration of the derivative. Yeah, so, so f is equal to pq. So it means that uh, uh, p, p and x, well, both of these component functions, are uh, continuously differential. OK, so and then the rotor is made of the derivative of these two functions, so you want them to be continuous, to, for the rotor to be continuous in order to be able to uh, integrate. So, uh, okay, what else? Uh, C is uh, a numerated curve in, uh, uh, in the plane, again, uh, closed, uh, oriented, let's say, positively. Uh, positively means that it simply goes counterclockwise. Okay? Now, we already know, uh, okay, let me correct myself. So, uh, I, uh, the, 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 uh, the um, vector field is differential vector field on origin D in the plane. Okay, so, and then now we say that D is uh, bounded by C. Okay, so this is my C, and the what's inside is D. Okay. Uh, I miss one more, two more word. It has to be simple. A simple closed curve means that it does not have self intersections other than uh, at the beginning and the end point. So figure eight is out. Okay, so so um, there you go. So even though it could be oriented, uh, but uh, 
uh, uh, as you can see, uh, we, we don't want to deal with that right now. So in the simplest case, we have origin to begin with, uh, and then it is bounded by an oriented, oriented curve going uh, counterclockwise around. Okay. So then we are we are we can write the uh, the, uh, the the formula. So so uh, once again, line integral of C F P is equal to double integral of D uh, I'll let me just write I don't want to write order so I'll just write Q X minus Q Y yeah. ok so uh, that is the formula uh, so uh, we could it is a four dimension too so um, it is certainly more general than the fundamental theorem of calculus from, from calculus one. We could derive, if we, if we really try to, it's, it's really no big deal to derive the fundamental theorem from this. So every time we're moving on, we, we are, we are, uh, calculus will for sure be contained in whatever we, we state, uh, any, any calculus one, one ideas or a theorem, so that's, that's, that's one. Um, so you just pick a function that is, I don't want to go into it, let's just say so it contains uh, contains uh, uh, fundamental theorem of capitals. Okay, so what else uh, to be said here? Well, uh, then you, you can guess that uh, if fundamental theorem of capitals is for dimension one, this is two, there will be three and more, and uh, there will be more than one per, per dimension. So in dimension two, the, the, this is pretty much it, uh, but we, we, you, you might remember we have fundamental theorem of capitals for, uh, for parameter curves, and there, that's totally different. Uh, um, uh, a theorem, so there will be more than one per uh, per uh, uh, per dimension. Um, in fact, how many? Uh, uh, one. I think I'm uh, So it's like uh, what, how many? And uh, uh, n plus one. I think it's n plus one. So in two, there will be three, and then four, and so on. Anyway, um, okay, so uh, what I want to do here is say, we, while we're sort of digesting this uh, theorem, is uh, introduce um, a new notation uh, that is just used so often that uh, it is just impossible not to uh, mention it uh, and uh, have a little bit of experience with it. Uh, the notation is, uh, it, it is uh, the, all these integrals, com com complex integrals that we have seen. Well, we, we have seen the, the double and triple integrals and, uh, and line integrals, that for the most part. Uh, and each of them has, uh, has a different notation. It's, uh, it's done in terms of uh, differential forms. So recognizing uh, what we have uh, in, terms of, in terms of differential forms. So, so here's what, what I'm talking about is we can go to dimension one in calculus one and look at uh, something like as simple as this. Mm, I'm about to put capitals here. F x dx. So uh, this is what I'm referring to as as a differential form. Four dimension one, so very very trivial, and the um, uh, it is what is being integrated uh, in a more kind of advanced way of looking at, at calculus. It is we're not integrating a function as we used to we're used to so much. We're integrating uh, this differential form, which doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really tell us anything new uh, in calculus one, but in, in in higher high dimensions it does. So, but let me first uh, uh, show what what I mean by by differential form here. Uh, What's behind it? It is uh, what if we uh, look at, at and we think of x not as a as a variable, but as a variable and a function, and a function of another variable. Okay. So what what happens is what what's going to happen here? X is equal to x of t. So what do I do with this? You just type on d dt. Well, almost. So it will be I substitute, it will be f of x of t, then what? dt. No. dx dt. N no, what is dx? Oh, it will be dx of t. Yeah, and what is it? Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, calculus 1, 
What, 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 what am, am I talking about? You're recognizing the formula? X prime of t. X prime of t. I'm talking about the substitution, the integration of substitution. X prime of t dt. Okay? So that's what it is. So this is dx. Right? So except you, you use the u, u substitution, such an awkward uh, term. Uh, well, this is x substitution, if you like. So, uh, but it is substitution, so you treat one, uh, your new variable is in fact a function, you, uh, you, uh, you, and then what you do is you find d, what dx is by this very simple formula, but what is, what is it? It is, uh, it is uh, how we handle uh, differential forms. So functions are, are differential forms too, but then uh, they would be ones that, so this would, that is a differential form of of degree of zero, and this one is of, the, of degree one. Okay, and then there will be higher, high degrees depend, depending on the dimension of the of the integral. But the point being is that this this is not only this is uh, integration by substitution, which we not we don't look at this anymore, not this way. Okay, but but rather I want you to see that uh, we had a very similar expression uh, for many many. Uh, for a few weeks recently, uh, and that is the this looks very much like line integral, right? So so let me write it this way. So c uh, f dot d p equal integral from a to b. I, I, by the way, I forgot here a to b. I, I didn't finish the the formula, the first formula. Uh, so I have a capital b capital. What's the relation between the two? A, a lowercase and a, 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 a uppercase, what's the relation? One is a closed curve and the other is a boundary or an endpoint? Yeah, but you can be specific. It can be specific. It is a substitution, right? Yeah. So it is like definite integral. What's, how do we do substitution with definite integrals? So, so integration by substitution, by the way, goes from right to left. Okay, and then and then you create new limits of integration. Remember how a is this is t and this is x, right? So you can tell me what uh, what a is. This is the substitution. So when t is equal to a lowercase, x is equal to a uppercase. So it's simply x of a, and b is equal to x of b. Uh, once again, integration by uh, definite integration by substitution. That's what this is. Okay. So that that's that's whole line here is uh, integration by substitution, definite integration by substitution. Once again, reading right, right to left. So you start with a complex formula, you figure out your substitution, uh, you simplify it like this, and then if you're doing definite integration, you have to take care of the limits, and that's how. Okay, so, uh, all right, and then, and then let's see that we have pretty much the same, the same story uh, with line integrals, uh, except it's uh, slightly more complicated. So I have f uh, of, of p of t, remember this one, that's p prime of t, dt. If you look at the right hand side, it is very similar. And once again, this is t. Uh, the right hand sides are pretty much identical, except certainly you have just multiplication in the first line and the dot product on, on right. Okay, but, but ultimately it's, it's the same thing. Uh, on left here, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, slightly more complicated because uh, uh, it might be de dependent on not only the beginning and the end points uh, might matter, uh, for this integration, unless you have a gradient vector field to begin with. So uh, the point is, of, of uh, we are trying to write it out in a different in a different way. Uh, the this one. So we know what's behind. What's on the right is is uh, uh, is what's behind that symbol on on left. So this is notation that we have used. Uh, this is its meaning. So what we want is now uh, just just have a different notation which would mimic the notation uh, in, the, in the first line. Okay, so, so with Ds, if you like. That way you can, you can, carry, you can think of, of uh, what we do is, is just integration by substitution, which is in a way it is. Uh, right, the, you have a curve and then you parametrize it. Okay, and then you substitute it into, into your uh, vector. 
Okay, so the notation is, uh, uh, here's how we, we start thinking about P is our parameter curve, right? So uh, P of, instead of, uh, yeah, that's fine, P of T, okay, now our parameter curve. And we can think of it as, as X of T, Y of T. So if we, we want to think about it as in, two dimen in a two-dimensional two map, in a two-dimensional space, you can have as many as you like, but let's say two-dimensional. Okay, then, uh, then what's the meaning of dp in the, uh, uh, and it is, uh, it is just simply uh, dx ui. It's a vector dx ui, and well, you, you don't really have to do anything, and then that, that's pretty much it. Right, so, so if you, were, you had a location xy, I don't know what you want to, I mean, as long as you remember, as long as you remember that, as long as you remember these are, these are not just variables, but they, they might be represented by functions. So uh, x is equal to x of t, y is equal to y of t, right? So that, that's what's, what's behind it is parameterized. So we just write p equal x of y, and then what's the meaning of dp? Oh, we, we are looking at dx and dy separately, those uh, um, increments of, of the variables. Uh, they, that, that's not anything that we need to make up. We know. This is one variable function, that's one variable function. We know how to find the d's. So um, we, we could proceed, if we want, we could proceed to x prime of t dt and y prime of t dt, right? And then what happens? Well, it is equal to, what is it equal to? How about we factor dt out, x prime of t y prime of t and t, and then what? What's that vector? p prime. p prime of t, and so as you can see, we are where we started right here. Okay, so so that notation is totally legitimate. We just uh, this was a this was a kind of coordinate free uh, free notation, uh, but uh, uh, and then we were trying to have something more uh, specific, more manageable. Uh, so something that we can we can we can handle without actually introducing p as a specific uh, uh, um, uh, parameterization of our curve. Okay, so that's what we have, and uh, uh, and then uh, and then uh, so let, let's forget about this. It's just to confirm that it works out, and let's substitute into my, my formula over there. So so let's see what my log integral is. So I have integral c f dot dp, which is equal to one f is dq. Q and my dp is dx dy. And this is a dot product. So, well, I just do dot product. pdx plus q dy. q, q dy. Okay, so that is the notation that I'm talking about. So then, uh, then as I was just saying that this is whatever follows, the whole thing that follows the integral sign is, is called the differential form. So a uh, differential form, form of uh, dimension 2, x and y, order 1. Order 1 because there was only one dx dy. Whenever you have something like, uh, I don't know, or dx dy, or what is this, uh, what I'm talking about, I'm talking about double integrals, right? So then this will be differential forms, dimension two, still order two. Okay, and on and on, you can have, uh, you can have as many variables as you like, uh, and that will only change the order, uh, and then, uh, or rather the dimension, so if you have x, y, x, 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 d, f, d, y, d, z, that, that will be the way you have a triple integral, we have order three uh, um, uh, differential forms, uh, so we don't worry about about that. This is the uh, the the primary. Uh, the, this is the two primary uh, concerns of ours uh, because we just want to state uh, being able to state Green's theorem in the um, in the in this notation. Okay, so it is really uncomplicated. Just the formula. So uh, I'm gonna uh, state it now. So uh, so Green's theorem. Uh, so the left hand side, my C is uh, now looks like like this: P D X plus Q D Y. The meaning of which is the same as before. So if in any doubt, 
uh, go right here. I'll look at what the formula on the right. Um, there, there is no no trouble whatsoever. In fact, I'll, I'll probably just carry out that computation once. And the right hand side is a double integral over d uh, of what of the rotation. Uh, I'll let me write it out once again. Um, Q y, Qx minus Py dx dy. Okay. So that is my green sphere in the differential form notation. It looks quite, quite a bit different, but uh, some parts are, however, not different at all. So C, D, there, then the relation between them is still, is still there. Okay? So, uh, so once again, the, uh, uh, the right-hand side is definitely doesn't have any difference. In fact, it might rem remind you of the Fubini sphere, which means indicating that notation, that it is, in fact, two consecutive integration with respect to X and with respect to Y. It is exactly true. The only uh, problem then becomes to figure out how to represent D in such a way if possible, that you can uh, you can actually uh, have a two consecutive integration with respect to x first, then with respect to y. So that's a separate separate issue. And then uh, and the left hand side is what is if I have say p of t is equal to I don't know uh, t squared minus one, then p of t is equal to t, and c is equal to sine t cosine t. Then what do I do? I just uh, I just uh, uh, substitute them into into my formula, and then what what I have is uh, this is s, this is y, by the way. So so there you go. So the integral will be uh, integral from say zero to pi from zero to two pi, and then f. Where is my p t squared minus one? I put here dx. What is dx? It will be sine t prime dt. That's that's the x, right? And then uh, the second term is q, which is t multiplied by. And th this time, as you can see, there are no dots because the dot product is already there. That's summation. The two multiplication and summation is what the dot product uh, dot product is. And uh, and then finally, cosine t prime dt. Okay, so dt uh, that's dy. Dt is uh, factored out, and I just finished my computation in that manner t squared minus 1 cosine t plus t negative sine t dt and the and the rest is uh, is the same as, as always okay so uh, so apparently we don't have a lot of time for you um, uh, and I still I still have a few words to say about this but at least we'll, uh, hopefully we'll have some time to at least have a um, big picture view of the, of the course uh, tomorrow.